Uh, Granton, you would like to give a word of prayer? Okay, there is no problem. Okay, that one can go through the darkness. Yes, <laughs> that's better. So, let's pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for everything that you've done unto our life, O oh Lord. Jehovah, we adore you. We give you glory. Jehovah, for the far that you protected us from last Thursday that we, when we meet until today, Jehovah Lord. I ask you to be with us. Open our hearts. Open our mind. Jehovah, give us wisdom in thy word so that we may be in thy word, in the truth, as we are waiting for the wonderful world tomorrow. Jehovah Lord, I ask you to be with us. You start with us this Zoom meeting until the end. I ask you and pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Now it is time for the daily manner. For the daily manner, please. Daily manner. Daily Mana for being the nineteenth of October. It says, Freely ye have received, freely give. That is in Matthew chapter ten, verse. Says, let us be on the alert to give all who are hungering and thirsting the blessed food which has so greatly refreshed and strengthened us. If they do, if they do not get it, they will faint by the way as they go looking for other provisions. We have the very thing which all of the household of faith need. Without it, they cannot maintain their standing. They cannot press on. They shall surely become discouraged. Whatever we may have of financial means for sending forth the bread of life to others, or whatever we may have of knowledge of the truth, is neither to be selfishly hoarded nor selfishly partaken of by ourselves. It is to be consecrated to the Lord and out of that consecration, the Lord will bring blessings to others and increase blessings upon our own heads and hearts. Over. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm true. I'm true. I was muted. Freely you have received, freely give. Matthew 10, verse 8. We welcome comments to be made on the daily manner for today, October 19th. This is free for all, open to all. It's a good one. Because now we are seeing in most churches what is happening is 
the cell of what you have been given. The gospel has been given freely. The word of the scripture is given freely, but it is on big, big, big cell in the form of holy water, holy oil, laying of hands, etc., etc. Wonder what is happening. Is it really received freely and freely given? Those who have uh, come to the knowledge of truth should be a little bit different and live according to what we have here. People need this word. People want to hear more. We have the well. We draw from the well freely. Let's give it to them freely. May I add something? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you, Brother Eber. Uh, yes. Today's sermon is really encouraging. It is quite encouraging that we are really the salt of the earth. So we have something that can we can give to those people who are angry, going angry because of the word. And this, what we have, we were given free and we ought also to keep it free with the truth, without favor, and do the best so that the world can know the truth. Thank you. Yes, that is quite a point, John. We have been given freely. We have this word. We have this truth. Let us do the same. Let's give it freely to all those who have ears to hear and those who are ready to receive it. Thank you. More thoughts, more comments before moving, move on. One more comment, maybe. One more comment, and then we can move on. Brother James, if you have. No, no, I don't have a comment. Eh? I joined yeah. late, so. I don't want to interfere because I came, I joined late because of the net, net. It is understandable. Okay, now I suppose it's time to go for the text. We are 18 minutes after eight. Let's try to go to the next one, next item, which is the, the reading of the text the text for all those who have this text we have the text I suppose each one of us here we invite you to to read it for us Evans if you you are prepared you are ready Brother, what can I read? Okay, John. Okay, John. It is uh, the day of the Lord. That is our yeah. test, text. That's the thing. The day of the Lord. Yeah. The Bible uses the expression day of the Lord or day of Jehovah to denote that period in the closing days of this gospel age. When the hand of God is manifested in in the affairs of man, of men, it is properly applied to that part of Christ's second presence 
during which Saturn, Saturn's world or social order is still destroyed, preparatory to the establishment of Christ's millennial kingdom. We find this in First Thessalonians, Thessalonians, Thessalonians 5, verse 2 and 3, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. The work of Christ as the arm of Jehovah in setting aside Satan's social order is described as being accomplished during the days of the Son, the Son of Man. Luke 17, verse 26 and 27. It is the time when Jesus, the Son of the Son of Man, is present. The crumbling of the inst institutions of the earth being among the signs that he has returned. The day of the Lord or Jehovah is also in the Old Testament, where it is symbol symbol symbolically described as one of the clouds and darkness, denoting trouble. Joel chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Daniel described this day as the time of the end, in which there would be a great time of trouble. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 4. The same period of national and international trouble, <coughs> which denotes the destruction of Saturn's world, is also the day of God's vengeance. Isaiah 34, verse 1 to 6, verse 1 to 8, Jeremiah 25, verse 32 and 33. During this period, the sinful and selfish institutions of men dominated by Satan are to be destroyed. Whereas here, here to fall, these have been allowed to flourish. At the close of this day, selfish human authority Selfish, selfish human authority throughout the earth will be replaced by divine authority in the hands of Christ. Revelation 11, verse 15, 17, and verse 18. The Bible reveals that in the process of destroying the nations of men, the nations be, became, became be, leading to the Time of great Jesus, Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22. The Bible also uses the expression last days with reference to these final days of this present gospel age, just prior to the establishment in the earth of Christ, Russia's kingdom. This kingdom is likened to a great mountain which has dominating, which has a dominating position over all other mountains and hills, symbolic of the kingdom of the world. The Bible shows that the people will recognize the authority of Christ, Christ's kingdom, and through obedience to its laws will find peace and security. Micah chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. Evil will, evil will, evil will not have been completely destroyed until the closing years of Christ's kingdom. While it is during the day of the Lord that the selfish governmental institution 
of national and international trouble. <coughs> the work of abolishing all evil will continue during the during the ensuing thousand years of the king of, of the kingdom. Finally, all enemies will have been destroyed. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25 to 26, done. Are we together? You, yeah, we are together. You can read the summary of important thoughts. Yeah, the summary. Summary of important thoughts. Yeah. The day of the Lord or day of Jehovah is that period of time in the closing days of the gospel age prior to the establishment of Christ's thousand-year kingdom when the selfish, evil institutions of men are to be destroyed in, in a great time of trouble. It is also described in the scriptures as the day of God's anger and wrath and the day of God's vengeance. Done. Thank you very much, Brother James. Now we have, uh, at least from that summary, we see what we have read in the text that it is all about the day of Jehovah during the gospel age time of trouble and at the end of the the time of trouble the establishment of the kingdom and we see in all these things God is showing his anger his wrath his vengeance. now in order to see whether we have understood the text properly, let's uh, look at the questions one after the other. And we are told here, in the study of prophecy, it is essential to realize, to realize uh, that uh, a day frequently stands for a long period of time in this regard to prophecy. So let's look at first the first question. What is the day of the Lord referred to in the prophecies of the Bible? And how long is it? How long is it? What is the day of the Lord referred to in the prophecies of the Bible? And how long? Is it open to all present? First question. May I try? Please do. The John it is mm -hmm. the messianic age which will last for 1000 years when Satan will be in prison and all the troubles of the world will have gone. So it is the millennium age. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I well tried. That is a good trial. Good trial. More thoughts? Other comments on, the, on this one? Brother Epa? Yes, uh, Sister Karen. Can I read, can I read a few scriptures? Um, I'll start. There's a bunch in Isaiah. I'll start with Isaiah 2.12. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Isaiah 13, 6. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. 
and it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Isaiah 13, 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel and with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Isaiah 34, 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. Joel 1, 15. And there's like a... 60 scriptures that talk about the day of the Lord. For, um, alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as destruction from the Almighty shall it come. And so there's just a few out of the 60. And to me, it's the great tribulation. It has not started yet. And so I won't say how long it is. I don't think it's very long because if God doesn't stop it, no flesh would be saved. That's just my thoughts over. Uh, quite good thoughts here. And quite a number of beautiful uh, passages cited here on the day of the Lord from the prophets and prophecies. Hmm. Okay, let's move on to the second question. I think we have had quite a, an eye opener there. What does the Bible mean by the days of the Son of Man? What does the Bible mean by the days of the Son of Man? So we have the days of uh, the Lord. Now here we have the days of the Son of man um mm -hmm. uh, from well maybe we can look at the, what the text says that this is a time when jehovah uses christ as his arm in the setting certain social order aside. And we have been given a, a quotation, Luke chapter 17, verse 26 to 27. Luke chapter 17, verse 26 to 27. Cynthia, you want to read that one? If you're there, I thought you were around. Yes, Brother Epp, it is in paragraph two. Okay. So uh, give us, read, your, I just, I, give us your talk two, eh? from that paragraph. Yeah, it is, uh, the paragraph says the work of Christ at the arm of Jehovah in setting aside Satan's social order is described as being accomplished during the days of the son of man. We find this in Luke. I don't know whether if somebody is going to read for us Luke 17, verse 26. Yeah, yeah. We had asked Cynthia. Is that Cynthia to is do there it? Luke 17, verse 26 and 27. Or Arthur? Nobody. Arthur? 17. Look. 17, 25, 26. 26, 27. Look. 17, 26. 26. Oh, you guys should be a lot. We should and go to Irish. It says, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered in the ark, and the flood came and they saw them all from them. 
Okay. Yes, Naepa. Yes, yes. Will cut us an hour. That is why Jesus is saying he's something like a thief. And he's, uh, he's comparing this day. This day will be the same day as the Noah's day. People will continue yes. enjoying leisure and being married, drinking and doing all sorts of things. So it will start the day when the, 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 our Lord Jesus will ascend and it will cut people unaware. Yeah. Like now, people say? Yeah. In Israel, I love two weeks ago. Yes. The Hamas caught the Israelites unaware. And they took, they, 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 they kidnapped and killed a lot of people. Yeah. So it will be the same day like that. Thank you. Thank you. I think that is done. That question is done. We move to question three. How did the prophet Joel and the prophet Daniel describe the day of the Lord? How did the prophet Joel and the Brother. prophet Daniel describe Brother. the day of the Lord? Brother Epa? Yes, David Kemboi. It is raining here. Let me try before the network. We, you, you, we can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. Prophet Joel and Daniel describe it as the time of end in which there will be great time of trouble. We can find that one in Joel 2, verse 1 and 2, and Dan 12, verse 1 and 4, respectively. Okay. You want that read? You want it to be read? Brother Kimboy, you are done. Okay, Brother Kimboy, I think you have given us your thoughts on some Someone scriptures. Someone read. Okay. Joel 2, verse 1 to 2, and Daniel 12, verse 1. Okay. Yes. Okay. Joel mm -hmm. has been given chapter two, verse one. Eh? Joel chapter two, verse one. Yes. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the dawn spreading on the mountains. A great and strong people. There has never been the light, neither will there be any more after them, even to the years of many generations. And then Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. At that time, St. Michael stand up, the great prince who stands for the children of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who shall be found written in the book. You're muted, Brother Epa. Yes, I'm muted. Thank you, Sister Karen. Uh, now, you can say something, Kemboy, or it, that was good enough. We have heard from those verses in Joel and in Daniel. 
what is implied here by day of darkness and day of clouds and the time of trouble no a time of the end it is all about trouble i suppose and i think that is what uh, our brother was driving at a time of trouble great trouble for this question okay now that that is uh well answered well done in scriptures we can go to question four sisters since you want to read the question yes for us? okay yes. For us? question four what is the day of what is the day of God's benevolence? Okay, that's the question. What is the day of God's vengeance or wrath? What's the day of God's vengeance, God's wrath? What time was it? And in, from in the, the text we are given. From the fourth paragraph. From the fourth paragraph. Yeah, the fourth yeah. paragraph yes, James, where we are given. The first paragraph, the, 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 the second last of page 41 of our little book. Okay, what does it because say? This same period, and international trouble, which denotes the destruction of Satan's world, is also described in the Bible as the day of God's vengeance. We get this in Isaiah 34, verse 1 to 8. Let somebody read Isaiah. Somebody ready? Isaiah, okay, 34. Quickly. Isaiah 34, verse 1 to 8. Someone has got it. I suppose Granton. Uh, Granton. Isaiah. Okay. Isaiah yes. It says It says Come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is written in the word and and all things that came forth for it. For, for the indignity of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their enemies, armies. He had utterly destroyed them. He had delivered them to slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their things shall come out of their of their car cases, and the mountains shall be melted with, the, with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll. And there, and all their hosts shall fall down, as they leave full of off, off from the vein, and and as falling fig from the fig tree. For for my sword shall be battled in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Adam and upon the people of my cast to to judgment. The sword of the Lord is fulfilled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats. With the fat of kidneys of lambs, for the Lord had a sacrifice in Bozra and great slaughter in the land of Indomea. And, and the unicorns shall come down with them and the balacons with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. 
for it is the day of the Lord's Vegas and the the year of recompense for the con controversy of Zion. I'm done. Yeah, another person to read is Jeremiah 25, verse 32 and 33, which supports Isaiah 34, which was read. Jeremiah 25, 32 to 33. Matri, you would like to read that? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. 25, Jeremiah. 32, Jeremiah. 25, 25, 32, 33. It says, that, that says, that says the Lord of hosts. Oh, that's John. Behold, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, behold, disaster shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the farthest parts of the earth. And at at that day, the slain of the Lord shall be from one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented or gathered or buried. They shall become refuse on the ground. So that is 32 to 33. Thank you. At least, James, I suppose uh, they have read. The yes, let me add the last sentence. Okay. Yeah, the last sentence. Can I read the last sentence of, of that? Yes. Okay. The, the, yeah, the last said, sentence. They, they shall not yeah. be lamented or gathered or buried. They shall become refuse on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Don so, yeah, during this during this period, the sinful and selfish institutions of men dominated by Satan are to be destroyed completely, whereas here to fall, these have been allowed in to flourish. They have been only allowed. Eh? The, whatever we are seeing now, it has been only allowed. To flourish, but they are going to be destroyed. Yes. Thank you, James. That uh, question, I believe, has been answered. That these institutions of men dominated by the enemy must be completely destroyed, the way Isaiah and Jeremiah have put it. So let's move to question five. You want to read question five? Cynthia, Matrin. Question five? Can read? Yes. Explain what will be accomplished during this prophetic day. Mm -hmm. That's the question. Okay. What will be accomplished during this prophetic day? What do we expect? And this prophetic day, how is it like? How are people behaving? Uh -huh. And what will happen to them? The idea comes around Revelation chapter 11. These kingdoms of men must be replaced by the kingdom of our Lord and, uh, and his Christ. So, what do we get from the text? We get it, Brother Epa, 
Yes, James. We got it in the fifth paragraph, which is the last paragraph of which it says uh -huh. the clause, it which it says of how authority throughout the earth will be replaced by divine authority in the hands of Christ. We find this in Revelation 11, 15 and verse 15 and verse 18. Are we going to read? In the chapter of the Revelation 11, 15, 17 and 18. So we, we, we confirm what the scripture says. Yeah, it's good to confirm. We as Bible students. Yeah, we somebody to read. What the Bible says. Somebody to read. Okana, John, Okana, who is ready? Revelation. Yeah, Revelation, Revelation 11, mm. but 17 and 18. 15, verse 18. Let's see, since you are ready again, yes. I see your mouth is open. And the okay, seventh, I'm reading. Yes. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are be have become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And okay. and the fourth and the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, be because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast, hast reigned. I'm them. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, the revelation says that the Christ will take over the, this kingdom of earth. This kingdom which our Lord has given them to flourish and to be powerful and to rule over all human humankind of the world, our Lord will descend and take it. The text continues to say the, uh, the Bible reveals that in the presence, presence of destroying the evil institution of men, the nations became angry, leading to the time of great tribulation foretold by Jesus. We, we get this in Matthew 24. Let us see what will happen when all the nations will gather to fight Christ, when Christ will be coming to take over the, the kingdom of God. Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22. Okay. So this evil world, this, this evil governments, this evil things happening, will be destroyed at the presence of Christ. And James is giving us Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22. It says, Yeah. For then shall be great tribulation, such as such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor yes. ever shall be. And expect those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those who days shall be shortened. Mm. Yeah, because of the sake of the elect, the days will be shortened. Otherwise, no human flesh will remain on earth, on the surface of the earth. Continue, Eva. Okay, thank you. At least we see all these human governments, human authorities must give way to the greater authority from Christ and from God. Revelation 11, 15, 17, 18, very favorite verses, very favorite passages. Chapter, uh, question six. Can be read again. Question Question six. Okay. What it are says, the days? You're going to read? Go ahead. 
What are the last days mentioned in the prophecies and what takes place during these days? Okay, some kind of two questions there. What, what are, are the last days? days? What are the last days? Mm -hmm. And what takes place during these days? Okay, those are the two questions there. This last days, uh, prophecies mentioned during this present gospel age, just prior to the establishment of the, the kingdom of Christ on earth. That should be about it. And this is where we get the symbolic mountains and hills. Someone can talk about Granton, want to talk about that? Or still in the dark? Arthur? Oh, today, today's my day. Okay, James, come on. Yeah, we get this in the second paragraph of, of our page number 42. Second paragraph of our page 42. We say the Bible also uses the expression last day with reference to, the, to these final days. Last day to reference to these final days of this present gospel age. You know, we are living in the gospel age. So, the gospel age. You know, when the gospel age started. When the Holy Spirit sent it down to the apostles. So count those days up to now. I think we are going to the end. But this is during our time. Present gospel age. Just prior to the establishment in the art of Christ, Russian kingdom. <laughs> this kingdom is like likened to a great mountain, which has a dominating position of all the mountains. You know, in the study of the Garetim, eh, the, the mountain means kings. The hills also means small kings. So the mountain is the king. Eh? The calling of, down of, of, of the earthly and the social order, the present social order king. Symbolically of kingdoms, of the world. The Bible shows that the people will recognize the authority of Christ, Christ's kingdom, and through obedience, which is laws, will find peace, peace and security. You know the story which a child will lie, will lie down with a lion eh, and nothing will happen. It will be that day. We get this in Matthew 4, verse 1 to 4. I'm going to read Matthew 4, verse 1 to 4. Mika, Mika 4. Mika 4, verse 1 to 4. The book of Mika. Yes, Micah, chapter 4. But one yeah, supports what James has just said. Things will change for the better, and we expect the mountain to produce these better things. Someone to read again for us? A very good uh, chapter to read. Mika? Yeah. Mika chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. Okay, I will read. Yes. Uh, Matrin? It's, it shall come to pass in, in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and it shall be lifted above the hills, and people shall flow to it. And many nations shall come and say, 
Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall I go, shall go forth the law, the world of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and shall decide for strong nations far away, and they shall beat their swords into blow shears and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth for the mouth of host, hosts has spoken. I'm done. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. That is a great thing we are expecting. And there'll be peace, great peace on the earth. Something that we, we don't see now, but it is coming according to the prophecies of the prophets. And you can pray for it, even for the peace of Jerusalem. James, that was a good one. Thank you, James. Yeah, we, all, we also pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 1, 122, verse 6. We ought to read it every day and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. 122, yeah. verse 6, verse 8. Last one. Okay, let's have the last the last question. Number seven, eh? Question seven. How long will the work of destroying evil continue? Mm -hmm. How long will the work of destroying evil continue? Yes, so what's the answer? Open to everybody. What is the answer? How long will this work of destroying evil continue? Okay. From the time Christ is in charge to the time when, from the time he reigns to the time when uh, he ends his reign. And I think we have been given a good quotation on that one. Uh, I think which... we get this in the, in the, last, in the last, last paragraph. Yes. And we are given this also in the first Corinthians, chapter 15, verse number 25 and 26. Yes. As I need someone to check on the first Corinthians 15, 25, and 26. Eh? The text says, evil, evil will not have been completed, completely destroyed until the closing years of Christ's kingdom. So at the end of the millennium, the thousand years rule is when everything will be completed. While it is during the day of the Lord, that the selfish governmental institutions of men are destroyed in a time of national and international trouble, the work of abolishing all evil will continue during the ensuing, ensuing thousand years of the kingdom. Finally, all enemies will have been destroyed. And the last one is death. We get this in First Corinthians, but in chapter 15, but in the Bible, it might be Somebody to read. Okay, can I just read it? This is Brandon. Read also. 
A good one to read. The Bible. Okay, Granton. It says, For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I'm done. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So as James was explaining, the yes. work of destroying the evil will continue until the closing of the Yagabu. kingdom under Christ. And yes. we are told from this from Corinthians that finally even the last enemy, our big enemy, death, will go. So we have hope of a better life, of a better ending. After all these troubles, the end will be good. Now it is time to look at the scriptures, but I think we have done very well today by reading all the scriptures. And this will be a repeat of what we have just done. If we go over the scriptures again, we have done some good justice on the scriptures, all the scriptures we have read, I suppose. Um, we have done some justice to it. Why don't we go to the songs? Maybe the only scripture I could cite would be this one. We have not really labored on it. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Otherwise, these other scriptures, we have done justice to them. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10, someone can read it and give a small comment. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. I have it. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This is um, one of those 80 that I was talking about and is talking about the great tribulation where this world passes away and is getting ready for the kingdom over. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Sister Karen. We can see the works will be destroyed, but it's not the earth. The planet earth will remain intact. But the things, the works and the bad things on the earth will be destroyed. As uh, Sister Karen has put it, the time of tribulation. Um, now we can turn to songs in the night. One of us again. Songs in the night, and today we have Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. Songs in the night, before we move to the lyrics. And most, most of us don't have this. Uh... Yes, Brother Epa. Uh, yes, yes. Go Brother ahead. Epa. That is uh, who? Um, that is, is that uh, Raphael? Raphael, yes. Okay, Raphael. Thank you. Yeah, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. Yes. It says, There is that scattered and yet increases. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that waters shall be watered also himself. It says the evident lesson here is that the Lord is pleased to see his people cultivate breath 
of heart as well as of mind, generosity, in proportion to their knowledge of him and of his generosity. The scriptures nowhere declare that cases of absolute privation among the Lord's people are proofs that at some time in their past life when possessed of means, they failed to use a portion of it in charity in the Lord's service. But the inspired words above quoted come very close to giving this lesson. At all events, it is profitable that we lay this testimony to heart and that every child of God henceforth shall be earnestly careful that out of the blessings of the Lord coming to us day by day, some measure be carefully, prayerfully, lovingly laid aside a seed to be sown in the Lord's service according to the best wisdom and judgment which he will give us. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Rap, for reading the songs in the night. Yes. Now it's time for the lyrics. Lyrics. The lyrics are there of the program. Someone can just read it for us okay. and we we'll be well um, done. Lyrics of him number 226. The light in thy presence. O thou, in whose presence my soul takes the light, on whom in affliction I call, my comfort by day and my song in the night, my hope, my salvation, my all. Where thou, where those thou, at noon time, resort with thy spirit, to feed in the pasture of love. For why in the valley of death should I weep, or alone in the wilderness grow? No longer I wander a million from thee, to fry the desert for bread. My bread is fine, bounties of thee, my soul on thy part is well fed. Oh. Okay, it is done. Thank you, uh, Arthur. Now, Omondi. We have Omondi, we have John, Omondi and John on Chachi. Would you like to close with prayer? One of you. Rafa, maybe they want you to do it. Oh, Mondi, okay. Uh, Mondi, Ray. Mike, you can do it for us. So we are praying. Closing prayer. Okay, let's pray. Java. We give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the lessons we have learned. We request that let your word be written into our hearts and let us walk with them, Father, so that the day of your coming shall not find us like it did to the days of the Noah. Let us be prepared for your kingdom as we always ask that it comes as soon as possible so that these days of evil to pass so that we, we see your kingdom, Father. We pray for your kingdom to come. We pray for our health, Father, that we may be working towards uh, reaching your great commission of spreading the gospel to all nations, Father. You put everybody in our families, in our group here, in our churches, that they may work towards your kingdom to come, Father. I pray that as we are going to sleep or going to take our daily bread, may you be of blessings to us, Father. You put everything into your hands, Father, that may they be that which glorify you and that gives you honor. For I pray in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Amen. Amen.